Hey everyone, Katie here. So I have had a ton of requests from you guys to share my thoughts and my opinions on this greenhouse that I bought from Costco about a year ago. So today we're gonna share a little bit of a review. Don't forget to check out our Costco Yardistry greenhouse build series. We have three videos on that about how we built this greenhouse from start to finish, including the very early part of building the base and leveling off the area to putting in the flooring. So be sure to check out those videos. I'm also straightening up this greenhouse for the plants that I have in the future, which I'm gonna share with you guys today and how I plan to use this greenhouse over the winter. If you guys are new here, welcome to the channel. The first thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is the actual build of this greenhouse. I know it can seem a little bit daunting, especially when you take those very large, heavy boxes home from the store or even if you get it delivered. But I will say it took my husband and I, two people who are not very experienced with carpentry really at all, and we were able to put it up within a couple of days. So as long as you follow the instructions to a T, maybe watch a couple of videos and reach out for help when you need it through the customer service line, this build was fairly easy, I should say. I do absolutely recommend building it on a completely level surface. And that is why we used our garage floor because that is a level surface when we were building up the sidewalls. If you are off at least even a quarter of an inch, that is going to make everything wonky and it's gonna throw the entire greenhouse off. So you do need to have a level surface. That is my recommendation when it comes time to match up that ventilation window or even the side walls and the windows, it's gonna be, it's gonna make a big difference. But overall, it went pretty easy. I have to say I was very intimidated, but we were able to build it pretty easy. We were missing a few screws in the box and we called customer service. They were great. They sent us screws within a day or two. So that was not a big issue, but customer service is great. Even if you have some questions, you can also give them a call. They have videos online that will help you build it. And you can also reference some of our build videos that we've done in the past. I will go ahead and link them up here if you're curious on how we built it. I have a whole playlist on how we built our greenhouse, so feel free to check that out at the end of this video. So next I want to talk to you guys about durability. That's the big thing. Right now I'm in this greenhouse and it there is snow and ice sitting on the roof and it is holding up just fine. Um, it does not leak, which is awesome. The ventilation window does not leak. And we've had snow on here and ice for almost a week now. And it is very, very durable. Holding up to the wind, it does a great job. I have to admit, embarrassingly, we do not have this thing tied down. I know, and I don't recommend it. We do live in a tornado alley area, and we actually had a tornado that started about a half a mile away from where we live over this past summer. Uh, but that does say something to how it holds up with the wind. It's also how we have placed this greenhouse on our property that has made it a little bit more safe. We have a wind barrier directly behind it, about four feet, there's a fence. We also have a lot of tall trees and another shed and fence to the west of it, which is typically northwest where our wind comes from. We do plan on tying it down very, very soon. We are taking a huge risk and we're gonna be using tornado straps. So maybe we'll do a separate video on that because I know I've got a lot of questions from you guys about that. And I do recommend strapping it down, but it has held up to some pretty ferocious winds up until this point. So I'm very satisfied with the durability of it. Um, it does kind of leak at the windows and obtain a little bit of water um, in the windowsill areas. I don't know if that's just a matter of us not sealing it with the caulk enough, uh, but it doesn't leak from the roof. It doesn't leak from the ventilation window, which is actually one of the things that I wanted to test out and see because I thought for sure it would leak from the ventilation window. So I have seen some bad reviews about the ventilation window not working right or getting jammed. Ours works like a charm once we figured out how to get it to work and we had to put it in the freezer, I think, for like 30 seconds, or maybe it was the fridge, I'm not sure. <laughs> Read the instructions. But we did get it to work really easily, 
and it opens and closes all by itself perfectly. It was a little tight in the very beginning. We had a screw that we drove a little too deep. And so once we backed it out a little bit, and I'm saying like we didn't even back it out of the wood, it was still within the wood. Um, we noticed that it eased a little bit of the tension and it was able to open and close very easily from there. So before you go to put your roof window on your greenhouse, test it out as you're building it to make sure that it can open and close um, very easily because that's when you're going to want to troubleshoot that and make sure that it it opens properly. I believe it's about 75 degrees when it starts to open. In fact, we had a really cold winter day once. It was like 30 degrees outside and I saw the ventilation window opening up because it was 75 degrees in the greenhouse. So it does its job. I will say that the door does slightly bow a little bit and I think that causes a draft to come in. Um, that's kind of a bummer. Um, I've noticed a lot of other people have that issue. We might try some weather stripping to fix the situation, but I've also seen other people get stuck in their greenhouse. And I wanna tell you, I've not had that issue. Um, our, I, I use the door exactly as is. I don't worry about it shutting or locking on me. I think maybe if you were to slam the door, that might happen. Although there's a little bit of a easy close resistance on the door. So I've just not had that issue really. I just make sure that it's all the way over um, to the side when I go to close it. I also don't lock my greenhouse or put a lock on it. Um, because I just, you know, if somebody's going to break in, they're going to break in. There's not too much of value in here. So I don't feel the need to put a lock on it anyways. I think if you were to put a carabiner in that slot to prevent it from shutting on you, that might work if you're looking, if you're, you know, super nervous and looking for something to put in place of that. But I really do not have that issue. One thing I do recommend doing is sealing your greenhouse with some type of stain. It is cedar. It is wood. Over time, it is going to fade. It is going to warp. So that stain is going to help prolong and protect your greenhouse. Something we didn't do, we didn't even think about doing, but we do plan on doing it sometime this spring or maybe fall when it's really dry. We're going to put a stain on there just as an extra layer of protection. As far as the warmth in here, it surprisingly stays really warm. We had some sub-zero temperatures. We're talking negative 17 degrees in here. And it was a balmy 28 degrees, got all the way up to 36. Um, so it definitely stays warm in the day when it is in full sun. When it's overcast, that's slightly a different story. Um, and we are currently working on some heating methods, some passive heating methods that we can use in this greenhouse. So we can keep those nighttime temperatures up as well. So we can start our winter sowing. Um, but during the day, it does its job. Right now, we have some snow on top. So, I mean, it's still warmer than the outdoors by 15 degrees. In the next coming month or so, I'm going to be posting a video on how we're going to do a passive heating system in here because I do want to get some seedlings started and some early spring crops started in here. So I did want to talk to you guys a little bit about the choice of flooring that we went with in here. We chose to do just 12 by 12 pavers, and I spray painted um, some of the pavers white to give it a little bit of a checkered look. I love the pavers. Um, they work out really well. They're really durable. Surprisingly, the white does not fade or scuff up. It may, might get a little bit dirty, but I just sweep it off. The pavers with the pea gravel around the outside, especially underneath the shelving system, works great because it's really good drainage if I have water that spills or even if I just need to spray in here real quick to, to clean off the ground, it's gonna drain right into the ground. And that's exactly what I was looking for. Um, so this floor works out perfectly and it keeps it nice and tidy. <laughs> Okay, so I managed to put all of those storage bins underneath. These bins are for a project next week we're gonna be using to heat up this greenhouse. So I'll explain more about that later. But for now, I decided to store the pots on top just, you know, to save a little bit of space. We moved the shelf out here, the plant shelf out, so we can put the boxwoods up there. And up top, I have my fairy garden pieces that are from the front. 
yard, you know, just to prolong their life. I want to not have them out in the icy snow in the winter. So I put them in here. This is the Govi uh, temperature and humidity reader that we're using. It is um, Bluetooth. So, no, Bluetooth or Wi Fi? Bluetooth. So I can read it from inside on my phone. I wish I would have gotten a Wi Fi one, but I'm not sure if that would have taken up more battery or not. I'm able to read it from inside so I don't have to come all the way out here. So it's been giving me some readings on nighttime temps too. Overall, it really depends on what you plan to use your greenhouse for. And my plan was to use it to do some winter sowing and starting some early crops. I also plan to overwinter some of my plants in here, maybe some of my potted rose bushes. Um, and as you can see, these boxwoods that I did not have a chance to get into the ground. It definitely serves its purpose and I absolutely love this greenhouse. I love that it comes with the built-in shelves, both you know the workbench as well as the top shelves that you can use for storage. Um, I love how easy it was to build. I love the aesthetic and the look of it, the cedar. I know cedar comes with a little bit of a risk of you know, breaking down over time, but I kind of have a feeling that I will probably be upgrading to something bigger down the line, potentially in the next 10 years, who knows? But it definitely serves this purpose. And I do recommend this greenhouse. I think it's perfect for backyard gardeners. I think the measurements were like six and a half by seven and a half. So it's nothing too big and it doesn't take up too much space, but it gives you enough space to serve what you're trying to do for as a backyard gardener. I think if you had a larger property, anything over an acre, you might want to go a size bigger just because you probably have a lot more growing space. But as a backyard gardener in a suburban kind of area, it serves its purpose. But I do absolutely love this greenhouse. I love coming out here and working in the cooler weather because it's still a little bit warm in here and I can be outside in the winter when it's like really frigid. And I'm really, really impressed with how this has actually held up. We have had some hailstorms and none of the panels have broken um, and it's really durable and I just, I love it. I would recommend it. As far as my plans going forward, within the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be setting up a passive heating system using water bins. I'm gonna be starting some spring crops in here, some early spring crops and a little bit of winter sowing. Um, so that is the plan with the greenhouse. I hope to have it way more filled in the next month or so. So if you purchase this greenhouse and you already have it up, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Your opinions matter and they are very helpful to everybody else who is watching this. If you have any questions that I have not been able to answer or didn't go over, feel free to ask them in the comments as well. If you guys found this video to be helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. I do plan on having a lot of stuff in the garden this year, um, so be sure to follow along. We have a chicken coop that we need to build. Um, we have a pond that we need to put in, so there's a lot that's gonna be happening this year. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow along on the journey in my garden. I hope you all have a really great day. Stay cozy and warm out there, and we will see you in the next one.